Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. I tell you, she's got so much insight on how to improve your life and move your life forward if you're kind of stuck in a rut. And she's an intuitive spiritual life coach, master Reiki healer. She kind of pretty much does it all. She's a channeler. She's a psychic medium or maybe a medium, not a psychic. I'll find out more about that in a second. She is Kathy D. Carter joining us once again. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? Hi. I'm doing great today. Glad to be on. Yeah. Great to have you back. Um, let's circle back for a second. I know we talked about this last time we got together, but in terms of psychic medium, psychic or just medium, what, which I hate to do labels, but which one fits you? <laughs> right. I, yeah, I'm not a label girl. So before I could answer that, I would need your definition of psychic, of medium. What's the difference? Psychic medium. I'm not really sure. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Well, me either, because so many people do you have different definitions for that. And that's why I always ask, well, what's your definition? Um, I am not, I don't practice the mediumship in the traditional way. Mm -hmm. Now, I do connect with people's guides and sometimes past loved ones come in and the guides can even be past loved ones. But as far as to say, okay, we're going to try to connect Grandma Sue, I don't do that type of work so much mm -hmm. as I tap into the person's, um, their, their guides, guardians, whatever you want to call them. It's the people from the other side that are watching over that person, plus my own healing team. And I connect with them. And that way I am a medium Gotcha. In that sense of the word. Totally understand it. So if you're working with somebody and somebody from the other side just happens to, to channel through, okay, great, oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. But you know, we're, that's not our goal. Really, your goal, I would understand, is as an intuitive life coach, you're already plugged into that person's energy. So it's almost like having a, like a running start as a life coach. If you just meet with yeah. us, you know, say a traditional life coach, they're going to ask questions. They're going to find out more about the person they're working with. But for you, it's like you have a running start. You're already plugged into their energy. It, it's almost like you hit fast forward and you get right to the uh, the meat of the issue. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get to this today. And it's something a lot of people don't want to talk about, but it's right. something that drives a lot of us, whether you want to believe it or not. And we're going to show you that it really does. I'm talking about anger, dealing with anger in your life, what it does, how it manifests. And by the way, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've always heard this, that anger is kind of the baseline for a lot of our emotions and anger can turn into sadness. You're angry and it, and it manifests as, as you know, could be depression, but you're still angry about something, a situation, a person, whatever it might be. And that takes us into, you said something before we got on the air, anger runes. Now, yeah. I'm going to assume when we say runes, we're not talking about R-U-I-M-S. Right. No. <laughs> okay. We definitely need to explain that. That would be R U E S. R O O M S. Just like a rooms. living room. Oh, rooms, like a room right over there. Oh, because, okay. I need to explain myself. So I, I, <laughs> I have I, an to <laughs> I need clarity here. Um, runes are something else in the uh, energy healing yes. world. Yes. R U N E S, right? And that's yes. where we're going with that. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Scratch that. We're doing anger rooms. Go to your room. I should go to my yeah. room. I'm in trouble now. So <laughs> Explain okay. anger rooms. What are they? Okay. So there are actual businesses. We have some here in Dallas that it's called an anger room. And it is a place where you go. And the one that I took clients to, it's now closed, but there's others that have opened up, is you get to go into this room and before you go in, you put on a suit, you have goggles on, you pick your weapon, whether it's a golf club, a ball bat, tennis racket, mm -hmm. all their stuff is donated usually. And then you get to go into this room of furniture and different appliances, whatever they may have, or you can pay extra and get a set room, like an office setup or a kitchen setup. And you get to go in. The one I went to, they played whatever music you wanted. They had two guys. It was recorded because of insurance. And these two guys would help add on your anger because you only got like 10, 15 minutes in this room. Because once you tap into your anger, 
it flows. You you can release it. And people know this. Mm. They just witnessed it, I think, at a recent event where, <laughs> <laughs> where the yeah. anger got triggered and there was no stopping it. And a lot of the reason was because there was so much stored anger in the energy field that once that gets triggered, it has an energy of its own and the person may not have control over that depending on how much stored anger they had. Mm -hmm. So what I advocate for people is to, I mean, little ones, little ones, as soon as they understand this is a spot, not this spot, this is okay, but this is not okay. Once they can understand that, I advocate greatly getting a big, like the bean bag chair, get something big and soft and get you one of the, like the pool noodles that you float with in the pool and cut that in half or thirds and show the child, this is where we go when we're angry. This is where we go to release our anger emotion. So they'll take the little pool noodle and they'll go hit the, the bag releasing and moving that energy out of their energy field because what our society does is teaches you to store it they teach you to hold on to it don't you act out don't you mm -hmm. don't hit the guy in the face don't you do this that's not appropriate but they're not given the appropriate method to actually get it out of their field and that's when it starts to it, it accumulates and especially as we're a victim survivor growing that's one of my terms, victim survivor. We're all a victim survivor until we decide to start healing. And as a victim survivor, we just keep storing emotions, be it anger, sadness, grief. It can even be happiness because lots of people are not allowed to celebrate their joy. Somebody will say, well, that wasn't that good. You shouldn't have got that award. And then the person will store that happiness and celebration in their energy field. So mm. any emotion can be stored and it creates problems down the road. That's part of the healing process. So we're going to work on a happy room. That's our next one. <laughs> but right now yeah. we're working on the anger room. And I'll tell you, <laughs> you're right on point, Kathy. I started doing kickboxing. I don't know, maybe two months ago. Didn't know anything about it. I have a friend who's a trainer and she goes, yeah, you want to go over there and, you know, just mess around a little bit. I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. And I've heard that people kickbox and I, you know, I really didn't get it. Then I started hitting the bag uh -huh. and wasn't that great at first, but when I focused my inner anger, whatever it might be on that bag and was truly connecting with it. Whoa. Yes. Best workout blew all the other things I was doing in the gym away and it felt so good. I haven't done it in a while and I just miss it. I miss the, you know, just the, you know. You miss the release of the stored anger in your energy field because it makes you feel lighter. It makes you more loving, more tolerant, more patient. But we've never been taught this. Yeah. And unfortunately, even all of our excellent counselors are not into this. They haven't, they weren't taught it, so they don't do it. And I have had great success with so many people doing this. And even with, I have one client that has a four-year-old nephew and she has, he has lots of anger because there's a lot of conflict in the family mm. and he, he gets it. Kids will get it if it's just explained to them and you have to explain this is not appropriate behavior. You can't go hit children. You can't go hit somebody else. This is our spot where we come when we can't take any more and we need to release anger yep and they you can end up crying in an anger release you can end up laughing all of the emotions once you get the stored emotions moving out of the energy field you know others can come with it because they may be connected to it how do you know when you've released your energy like let's say you have a bucket inside of you mm -hmm. you know because you feel lighter that's the most common response is, hmm. oh, I feel so much lighter. And they'll say, wow, I'm energized. Wow, my thinking's clearer. Oh my goodness, I, 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 can, I know what to do now with that project. I've got my answer. Everything becomes, it's, it's calmer, it's clearer, it's, it, it's what you're striving for and you want all the time. And it's so simple to attain, but 
we're not taught it. Mm. We're taught the opposite. We're taught not to feel that anger. And then that's what causes all the problems we have in the world. If you'll just, if you can step back and look at everything that's going on, you see anger projection all the time. Yep. Yep. Because we project it onto people instead of projecting it onto the inanimate object where we could actually release it. Because what happens is we get addicted. We become addicted to the power of projecting anger because it, it it's almost like a a thrill it's a look at me look what i did to that person and and that's not where we want society going that's not where we're meant to go but it happens a lot and to your point kathy you may have anger from your childhood and that's part of the problem too because you were suppressed in your childhood even if it was a situation or family riff or whatever it might have been back in the day, you know, before you were seven, let's just say. Um, and you're like you said, you're told to hey, stop, stop, calm down, but you're not given as a child the alternative. If you want right. to do that, you need to go over here and, and take care of that. And this is the way you do it. Well, another example I just had was I had told a client about the anger room and explained it. And she happened to be an RN at an emergency room. Mm. And she had a father bring in a son that was, they thought the son was suicidal. He was wanting to harm himself. And he was nonverbal when he came in. So she and I had just had the conversation about the anger room because she'd never heard of it either. So she talked to the the child and she told him she said it's okay see we don't even think it's okay to be angry we think there's something wrong with that and that's not true anger is one of the emotions as well as love fear all of them it's one of the emotions but our society has taught us to fear it well we've learned to fear it because we see so many people projecting it everywhere and it's it's like dangerous don't go there And that's not what we want. We need to feel anger is just as much as important as any of the others. So she talked to this child and said, I think he was around 10. And she said, it's okay to be angry at your teacher. It's okay to be angry at your dad or me, but there's a proper way to handle the anger. And she explained the anger room to the dad. She had had the dad leave the room so she could talk to the child. And he, he was talking when they left. And they were going to go home and set up an anger room. Hmm. Wow. I don't know how it turned out, but, you know, this is what kids are needing because kids, I have another client that works with um, kids on the spectrum and another 10 year old. All of our kids are, they're in such bad shape right now because of what we've been through in the last couple of years. And This child was very depressed and he wasn't being listened to by his parents. And they actually put him in a a business that takes these kids that's on the spectrum so they learn to be social. He told my client, he said, "I'm, I'm angry. I don't need, I know how to be social. I'm just angry. And of course, they're not allowed to talk anger room or anything to the clients, but she knew because she has learned it through me and she's seen it with others that that that's what he needed. He didn't need social skills. He had those. But the parents. They're not even if they are listening, they're not understanding because a lot of times the children don't know how to put what they're feeling into words. Mm hmm. And that that's one of the saddest problems I see on our planet that I hope I can change. You're so right. You're so right. Even if you're a teenager and even well adjusted, you can be fixed 15, 16, whatever it might be. Yes. You don't know how to express it verbally. You might yes. punch a wall and then get yelled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. But see, they know they feel that energy of wanting to punch the wall, but they don't know what to do with it because they've never been taught. They've only been taught to suppress it, to to keep. Oh, no, you don't act that way. Absolutely don't act that way. But that energy has to go somewhere. And sometimes it's a punch to the face. Sometimes it's projecting verbal 
awfulness onto someone, Mm. it has to come out. The body can only hold so much without forcing you to deal with it one way or another. And when it does come out, especially for somebody that is uh, younger, sometimes it comes out in bursts and sometimes they're very powerful as opposed to go in the room. You got 15 minutes, knock yourself out. I don't mean knock yourself out, have a great time. Go in there, you know, get it out, do it. Right. Because it it goes into um, the book I want to write about how we've been taught everything wrong. Mm. Because we've been taught that anger is an emotion you don't, you don't ever express, you don't use. But see, that's what happens when somebody, I'm not, I'm not giving them an excuse. Please don't take it that way. But someone that goes on a shooting spree, they have no control over what they're doing because they have so much stored emotion and that carries energy, like I said, that can take you over and cause you to do things that in your straight mind you would not do. Yeah. And that's what's happening. We're getting so much of that in our society. Everybody's just blowing up on everybody. And we can't let that keep going. We need to turn this around and teach people how to handle their emotions. Well, as we said last time we got together, a lot of this begins in your childhood. You weren't taught how to deal with it. Um, Book title, by the way, working title, How to Reparent Yourself by Kathy D. Carter. There you go. Thank you. I love reparenting. It's almost like you're you're your own parent. You're teaching yourself over (laughs) again what, unfortunately, your parents didn't teach you. And unfortunately, you're not teaching your kids. And unfortunately, that I didn't know when raising my own children. Of course, of course. And it's just going to be a generational thing because, you know, our kids or, you know, and their kids, it's just going to, unless there's a, I don't want to call a stop, but just a wake up and awakening. Well, and that's what I say about the people. Like you can line up people and I'll say, okay, you're a warrior, you're a warrior, and you're a warrior. You have come here to help change the society on this planet. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of what we're here to do. The warriors are here and they're so lost because the society wasn't able to support them. Do you know how bad it is for a little child that has special gifts like a mediumship? Um, They can see spirits and then they're told by everybody, no, you don't, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. And they're tormented maybe by this spirit because this spirit's trying to keep them from going into their gifts of the light. Do you know what that does to a little individual that doesn't know what to do with all of that? That's another thing I work with is I help people develop. Well, first I help them become aware of their gifts and then I help them develop them so they can use them to their advantage, not their disadvantage. And understand it. And I agree with you. There's another book. Kathy needs to write another book for children who have gifts who may be intuitive to show them that it's okay, that it's okay to express. What do you see? You saw a spirit. Explain what you saw. And maybe it's legit. Maybe it's not. But again, what, what are we doing? You're storing it mm-hmm. inside. Hey, no, I don't want to hear about that. Yeah. You know, oh, oh, you saw you saw grandma last night. Okay, great. All right, time for bed. But no, <laughs> they uh, grandma. Well, and even babies that's nonverbal mm. can have experiences like this, and and they don't understand why this baby's always upset or whatever. And it can be totally because the baby's uncomfortable. Maybe there's a spirit in the house that needs to be asked to leave the baby alone. It, it, there's so there's so much in the energetic world that we don't talk about yeah and we don't teach how to handle it it's it's a real thing the energy is real i even i know an animal communicator same exact oh, yes. that animals pick up on spirit it could be somebody that crossed over it could be somebody who passed that hasn't officially crossed over for what that can happen as i understand it yes and your pet can be witnessing this or somebody could be speaking to your pet in a spiritual way, and you want why is why is Tippy always staring at the wall, or what? Why why do I get it? You know, not any tension, but, but the dog is looking that way. There might be a valid reason for that. It was so funny yesterday that you mentioned that because yesterday I was with a client on Zoom, and her cat, who has never appeared before, jumped up in front of the screen and looked right at me and she was saying take care of her give her fix her energy 
<laughs> and it was so cute. But this cat was not going to have, she was going to make sure her message got through. And that's what she did. She jumped right up and looked at me through the screen. Well, how interesting of all people to jump out in front of a screen. It's right. like you that knows how to harness that energy. And that cat probably picked up on your vibe, your energy. They do know. Just yeah. think about it. You know how if you've ever been the one at home with a dog or a cat, they always know when the their owner's coming home. Mm -hmm. They will go sit by the door. They'll they'll start looking out the window. They do different behavior because they they're very psychic. Cats are more psychic than dogs on the whole, but animals are very psychic. They really are. <laughs> I'm learning that more, more and more. And want to illustrate too what we're talking about that the energy transfer can be done virtually. For, for example, you're a master Reiki healer. You can do that virtually. And yes. there's a demonstration of how the energy can just go through a Zoom video or a phone call or whatever it might be. Exactly. Energy through anything. I stepped on you. I'm sorry. Say that again. I said energy travels through anything. Yeah. Yep. And it always did. We didn't we didn't realize it to its full potential until COVID kicked in and then Zooms were more popular and then more people were doing energy healing by way of that. Yes, true. Uh, we do have a question and some feedback. We're going to get to that in a sec. I, I want you to tell everybody how they can connect with you. And let's say if they wanted Reiki healing, they wanted uh, some coaching. Uh, how do they reach you? Um, they can reach me through my website. It's Kathy with a K, K-A-T-H-Y-D. Carter, uh, dot com, or you can call me at 214-245-2293. And please leave a text because I usually can't answer the phone when you call. Gotcha. Because we're doing Zoom videos and transferring energy. That's why. Right. <laughs> right. All right. We have Becky checking in from New Haven, Connecticut. Instant feedback, Steve at gmail.com. You can reach us. And she says, I've been through a lot in my life and often experience many different emotions. I'm not sure one of them is anger. How can I tell if it is? Oh, very good question, Becky. Almost everyone has anger stored in their energy field, but let me give you a little example of what happens sometimes. And I've had, I think, three very clear clients that have done this. As a child, they were not allowed to ever be angry. Like I said, it was one of those things. No, we don't have that. Emotion. Let's just get this out of the way. What kid is allowed as a, as a child to do that? I mean, you know, but even when my exactly. kids were younger and they had a you know meltdown, you know, mm -hmm. what do you do? Let me carry you outside and tell you to shut up. I, I don't mean it like that, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. And Becky, what I've found is that these three specific clients, it took me some time to help them work through this. But as a child, they had a lot of anger. There was a lot of anger because as usual, children come in to teach the parents. The children come in smarter than the parents. Parents mm -hmm. don't get that. And these children could see through the relationship of the parents. They could see the faults. They could see what was happening, but they couldn't be angry. And they turned to sadness because they could cry. They would let them cry, but they wouldn't let them get angry. They literally did a job on their brain and their emotions and they turned anger into sadness and a lot of times another way that this could happen is becky is that you might have a lot of stored anger but there's so much sadness and grief and other emotions that need to come out first that those have to be start you have to start releasing those before you ever get in touch with the anger. Hmm. Interesting. So how do you, how do you identify, we have like a, a minute left, but how do you identify those emotions that are inside of you? Can, you know, can you say to yourself, all right, that's a sadness emotion. I feel that, um, I feel joy. You know, when I think of that, how do you, how do you navigate that? Well, I'm able to navigate it because I can feel their emotions. When they talk to me, I can tell. They don't even know they're feeling sadness. They don't even know they're feeling anger because they're out of touch with it. But I can pick up on the energetic feel of what they're experiencing. So I'm able to help them tap into that and start to learn, oh, 
I was feeling anger right then because they they totally split themselves from it. They basically su suppress that emotion. Doesn't exist. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so funny. We um we said before we got on the air here that what do you want to talk about? And we was like, ah, oh, let's do anger rooms. And we were thinking, well, you know, that'll take us, you know, a couple of minutes and then we'll go into that was our whole day here. And that just illustrates how important it is to deal with anger, the emotion, and how you do yeah. it. Yeah, yes. I'm glad we talked about that. Uh, if anybody's dealing with that or anything else in their life, uh, reach out to Kathy, Kathy D. Carter, and that's Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R.com. Uh, you have such great insight, and you just you just get right to the point. It's so crystal clear, and stuff that we're all dealing with. You know, whether we want to admit it or not, we're dealing with it. Right. I appreciate it. I look forward to uh, catching up with you again sometime soon, Kathy. Thank you. I do too. Thanks for being here. And hang on, we're going to be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcast and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you can now listen live on the MyTuner Radio and online Radio Box apps for iOS, Android, and the Amazon App Store. Or check us out online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on onlineradiobox.com slash US so you don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.